Hey everybody, can you believe it? This is the last video for the week. Oh, I know I'm going to take a little breather. So anyway, we're going to take a look at the addition rule and the rule of complements. And we're still talking about probability. So probability by using the general addition rule. Computing probabilities by using the addition rule for, for mutually exclusive events. Computing probability by using the rule of complements. Compute the probabilities by using the general addition rule for subjective. So we have a compound event, which is an event that is formed by combining two or more events. One type of compound event is in the form of A or B. The event A or B occurs whenever A occurs, B occurs, or both A and B occur. Probabilities of events in the form A or B are computed by using the general addition rule. For any two events, A and B, the probability of A or B happening would be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So you figure this out first and then you're going to add these two together and then subtract this one. Now there's a reason for the subtraction and that's because there's an overlap when you look at the probability of A and you look at the probability of B. There's an overlap where some of them are in both parties so you have to subtract them or subtract one of them so that way you don't count it twice. And that's the whole purpose for this portion of the event. So let's take a look. We have a thousand adults were asked whether they favored a law that would provide support for higher education. In addition, each person was classified as likely to vote or not likely to vote based on whether they have voted in the last election. What is the probability that a randomly selected adult is likely to vote or favors the law? So let's take a look. We have likely to vote and we have favors the law. You can see there's an overlap here. So let's see how we do this. The probability that an adult is likely to vote or favors the law. So when we take a look at the people who are likely to vote, we're going to add all of these together. So the probability that they would be likely to vote is 721 over 1,000, so 721 thousandths. Now there are 372 and 151 people who favor the law, so that probability would be 523 over 1,000, which is 523 thousandths. Now I want you to notice that when we look at this, see how these are added twice in our probabilities? That's why we have an issue and we have to do the subtraction portion. So the number of people who are likely to both vote and who favor the law, this overlap right here is 372, which is 372 thousands. So we need to subtract that, we're going to add the first, add the second, but realizing that when we do that, we're adding these two twice. So we have to subtract this so that we can have the accurate amount because of the overlap, and that's why we get 872 thousandths. Computing probabilities by using the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. So mutually exclusive event is if it is impossible for both events to occur. Okay, so sometimes both events can't occur at the same time. If I take one die and I roll it, if I'm looking at the event that the die comes up three and the event that 
B, that the die comes up an even number, well, the die, if I'm rolling one, cannot be three and an even number. That's just not possible because three is an odd number. So that would be considered a mutually exclusive event. Exactly what I said, right? Okay, so if we look at a fair coin and we're tossing it twice, what is the event that one of the tosses is heads and the event that one of the tosses is tails? Now, notice here these events are not mutually exclusive since if the two tosses are heads, tails, or tails, heads, then both can occur because we're tossing it twice, keep in mind. If events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability that A and B would happen at the same time is zero. So this is where you can get a zero probability because it's impossible. So again, it's not possible to take a die and roll it one time and have it be both three and an even number. Not possible. This leads to a simplification of the general addition rule when we are looking at the mutually exclusive events. If A and B are mutually exclusive and we want to know if A or B will happen, keep in mind because they're mutually exclusive, there is no overlap. So that's why we have nothing to subtract on the end of this one is because there's no overlap, there's no need to. In a recent year of the Olympic Games, a total of 11,544 athletes participated. Of these, 554 represented the United States, 314 represented Canada, 125 represented Mexico. What is the probability that an Olympic athlete chosen at random represents the U.S. or Canada? Well, we know they're not going to represent the U.S. and Canada, so they're mutually exclusive events. So what we're going to do is take the probability that they would be from the U.S., which is our 554 over our 11,554, and we're going to add to that the probability that they would represent Canada, which is 314 over 11,554. So we have a common denominator here, which is nice, so we can just add our numerators, and then we can divide finally, and we will find out that the probability that we would get U.S. or Canada would be 0 0.075191, okay? That's probability. So if we wanted to change that to percent, which we often do, we would move this over twice and it would be 7.5%. Objective three, compute probabilities by using the rule of complements. If there's 60% chance that it's going to rain today, then there's a 40% chance that it will not rain. The events rain and no rain are complements of each other. Notice that complements will always add up to be 100%. The complement of an event says that the event does not occur. If A is any event, the complement of A is the event A does not occur. The complement of A is denoted by A, and you have this little C up here where the exponent usually is. This would mean it's complement. 200 students were enrolled in a statistics class. Find the complements of the following events. Exactly 50 of them are business majors. Okay, exactly 50 of them are business majors. The complement is that the number of business majors is not 50. More than 50 of them are business majors. Then the complement is that 50 or fewer are business majors. Notice it said more than 50 and that's why we would include the 50 here because it's not included here. At least 50 of them are business majors. 
then we would say the complement is that fewer than 50 are business majors. At least 50 means that 50 is included here. So that's why we would say fewer than here. The rule of complement is if you want the complement of probability, the complement of something, you would take one minus the probability. Keeping in mind that one minus the probability is the same thing as taking 100 minus the percent of that probability. So according to Wall Street, 40% of cars sold in a recent year were small cars. What is the probability that a randomly chosen car sold in that year is not a small car? So the solution we would have not a small car would be one minus the probability it would be a small car. That would be one minus 0 0.40, so we get 0 0.60. So, wow, that was really quick. We went through that quickly. How to use a general addition rule to compute probabilities of an event and form A or B. How to determine whether events are mutually exclusive. How to compute probabilities of mutually exclusive events. How to determine the complement of the event. And how to use the rule of complements to compute the probabilities. And that's going to be it for this week. So I will see you for the exam.